Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this uh, reconciliation, so-called, is uh, to reconcile to a bill that passed the House but did not pass the Congress, although I think the legislation was deemed passed for the purposes of a reconciliation bill. And um, what we are doing is, instead of a budget that reduces the deficit in a balanced and fair way, we are taking the Ryan budget, which specifically targets those most in need and uh, puts our nation's financial recovery at risk. Let me talk about some of the things in this reconciliation package. First of all, it reneges on the bipartisan budget agreement that 27 Republicans on this committee voted for. It's like the Republicans changed their minds. Slashes Medicaid in ways that will hurt hundreds of thousands of people, including at least 300,000 children, rather than shielding low-income programs as specified in that budget agreement that passed the House that was worked out with the President and we all voted for. It impedes implementation of the health reform law that is already benefiting millions of Americans instead of providing access to care for the uninsured. The reconciliation establishes a federal medical malpractice system that tramples on the meaning of states' rights, a central tenet of what I thought was Republican way of thinking. It fails to protect Medicare from billions of dollars in cuts under the sequester. I hope these police aren't here to object to anything any of us have to say. <laughs> but perhaps we shouldn't be surprised because this initiative is completely consistent with that Ryan budget resolution that Republicans passed on the floor last month. Under that resolution, defense spending is not only protected from sequestration, but increased. And it's increased uh, over investments in health, education, and research. Medicare eventually is going to have to come to an end, and people will have to take a voucher and see what they can buy. The number of uninsured individuals will certainly rise. But good news, millionaires and billionaires would receive more tax cuts because the Ryan budget allows the, the Bush tax cuts to be in place permanently and then adds more tax cuts on top of it. On top of it. So uh, we're going to, uh, I think, uh, vote for a reconciliation. I suspect pretty much on a partisan basis that um, is going to be a very uh, troublesome one and one that I don't expect is going to be law, at least while we have um, people in control of the government other than the Republicans who control the House on the Senate side and in the White House. We're also going to mark up two bills that contain the Republican response to gasoline prices. Uh, I don't think we'd find too many credible experts who would agree with the idea that these bills are going to reduce gasoline prices at all. House Republicans say the answer to high gasoline prices is more drilling and less environmental protection. Yet every economist and oil market expert tells us that this will have no meaningful impact on world oil prices. The global market, the global oil market is so big it's simply not possible for us to affect prices through increased production here in the United States, as envisioned by uh, the legislation. These bills are about using high gasoline prices as another rationale to advance a deeply anti-environmental agenda. That's political opportunism. The majority knows that all these bills are going nowhere. We need to stop pretending and get serious about legislating. I urge my colleagues, when we get to uh, actually voting on these bills, uh, to reject them, and I yield back the uh, balance of my time.